All right, let's get started. Now, what we did in the last class was to look at the delay for the inverter. Okay, <clears throat> so what we did in the last class was to look at um, was to look at the delay of an inverter. Okay, so delay delay of the inverter was based off the RC delay model, and then I mentioned that um, we are going to use unit inverter. I mentioned that we are going to use unit inverter as a, a template or a beginning step. As a, um, as a uh, beginning example, as a running example, if I can say. And unit inverter is that whose um, width is two times um, the uh, width, the length. Okay, if I'm using W minimum, and for the NMOS transistor, for NMOS transistor, um, W minimum and L minimum for a K value of one. Okay, for PMOS. So I mentioned a unit inverter looks like this. A P MOS and N MOS. The K P value for this guy is two, and the K N value for this guy is one. Okay. And what we did was to look at the delay associated with. We looked at the delay associated with uh, a fan out one inverter at this node. This called fan out of one because it is driving one output um, transistor, one output inverter. Now, who can remind me um, as to what the value of the delay here was. So we calculated two delays, the TPD rising delay, TPD falling delay. Any volunteers to uh, uh, remind us what we did in the last class um, and give us a value or an expression for TPD R? Yeah, this is Jeff Harthorn. Uh, both of those were calculated to be 6RC. 6RC, and actually 6RC was three times R, uh, or R times 3C plus 3C, R times 3C plus 3C, 6RC. Um, so the self-loading part of it, or the parasitic part of it, um, contributes to 3RC contributes to, this is the parasitic component, and this is the load component. And then I mentioned by increasing fan out, if I have a fan out of five, then the delay TPD rising is going to be R times 3C plus 5 times 3C. So 
the load component is going to be multiplied um, as the fan out um, goes up. Later in the class, uh, today or maybe next week, I'm going to show you um, I'm going to show you a linear um, delay model, okay? In which we are going to express the delay in terms of y equals to mx plus c, okay? So there is going to be, um, this is the equation for a straight line uh, with some slope, okay? I will show you how um, the delay here can be expressed in a linear equation model. Okay, we'll show how it can be expressed as a linear delay model. But for now, let's continue our discussion. And then what I did was um, to introduce the idea of calculating the delay for NAND gate. All right, we had a NAND gate with a fan out of one, meaning that it is driving one of the inputs, one of the inputs of uh, a NAND gate. Okay, so this is the topic we were discussing in the last class. Fan out one NAND gate. Right, fan out one NAND gate. So let me um, draw the um, let me draw the schematic for the NAND gate, and then we will take it from there. There's a PMOS. There's another PMOS. There's another PMOS, all in parallel. And that is um, going to a series combination of NMOS transistors. Okay, so this is a three input NAND gate. And what values did we pick for the KP um, and KN of the NAND gate? Who wants to remind us the values that we used? Two and three. Two and three, correct. So we used a value of two for the PMOS transistors and a value of three for the NMOS transistors. And this is uh, a fan out one. So what I'm going to do is this output is going to drive one PMOS transistor and one NMOS transistor, okay? So that's the idea of fan out of one. So if I am interested in finding out the delay at that node, I have to calculate what is, uh, what the parasitic delay RC is looking into the left or the driver. This is also called driver. And this is the load. Okay. Now, this is, it is correct that we picked the value of Kp equals to two and Kn equals to three, but how did we come up with these values? Are we following any methodology? Is there a reason why we picked um, Kp and Kn to be the values that we picked? Any volunteers? Devarchi? Was it because um, the PMOS is twice as slow, so you had to make them the same? Correct, so the PMOS is twice um, as slow as the NMOS transistor, uh, or PMOS is half as fast as the NMOS transistor. So I picked the same value two, two, and two. 
but then why not 444 or 666? Or in other words, how did I come up with this number 3, 3, and 3 for the NMOS transistors? Is it because they're in parallel? Because R by 3, R by 3, R by 3 will make it to R. So sure, you're all correct. So the NMOS transistors, if you look at this, NMOS transistors are in series. Okay, so when they are in series, their resistances add. And the consideration I'm doing is, I want this series resistance to be equal to R of a unit inverter. Okay, I said we are going to use unit inverter as a um, running example. So I wanted the resistance in the pull down network, the total equivalent resistance of all these NMOS transistors, I want that to be equivalent to R. So the only way I can get that is by making each of these R over three. So in order to make these R over three, I have to pick a KN value of three, okay? Because for PMOS transistor, what happens is for NMOS transistor, the resistance is K um, is uh, R over, for NMOS transistor using K times the minimum width, the resistance is R over KN. So if I pick a value of KN equals to three, each of these resistances is going to be R over three. And the total equivalent is going to be R. Pretty good. Now, how about PMOS? PMOS are in parallel. We connected PMOS transistors in parallel, but then why did we pick, um, we'll leave it there. Why did we pick the value of two for the PMOS transistors? The idea is simple. Um, when we are in parallel, we will estimate the worst case. The idea is that when all the PMOS transistors are off, excepting one PMOS transistor, okay? Let's say there is only one PMOS transistor that is on, the rest of them are off, okay? So that is the worst case scenario. One of the paddle paths is on and the rest are all off. So I wanted to make that guy equals to R. The equivalent resistance for this guy should be R. So for a PMOS transistor, the resistance equals to 2R over KP. So if I pick a value of KP equals to 2, then I will be left with an equivalent resistance of R. So the reason is, uh, the reason I picked a value of 2 for the PMOS transistor is to make sure the pull-up, pull-up, network equivalent resistance in the worst case i wanted to make sure that it was r okay and that's the reason i keep the i picked the value of kp Okay. Let's do another example. Let's do another example of how we can, if I, let's say I have a four input NOR gate that looks like so. Four NMOS transistors in parallel. and then four PMOS transistors in CDs. What values would I pick for KP? And the KN um, values, and that's the same throughout. What values would I pick for KP and KN?
in order to make sure that the overall resistances are in the pull-up network and the overall resistances are in the pull-down network. Anybody wants to take a guess? Or CMOS, it should be four KP. KP should be one answer is that KP should be four. And why is that the case? Because when KP is four, it will be um, R by K. Mm -hmm. Two R over KP, remember? Yeah. Uh, so for a PMOS transistor. So KP should be eight instead. KP should be eight is the correct answer that you're right. So the K value of KP should be eight. And what value would you pick for KN? KN should be four. KN should be four. And can you tell me why that is the case? Why do you think KN should be four? Remember, I want to design for the Worst case. The worst case happens when all of these NMOS transistors are off. Okay, then what is the resistance of this single NMOS transistor? If all the NMOS transistors, assuming all the three NMOS transistors are off, assuming that, then the value would be KN, or, I'm sorry, R over k n and i want that to be equals to r therefore i have to pick a value of k n equals to one okay i'm evaluating for the worst case so i would pick a value of k n equals to one because the n mos transistors are all in parallel okay so uh, i Assume that the worst case happens when one NMOS is on and the rest of are off. Okay, and I pick a value of eight for this guy. So this could be one of the questions in your quiz. For example, if I give you a three input NOR gate or a two input NAND gate or whatever. So what happens is um, each of these resistances So these are all PMOS transistors. So 2R over 8, or R over 4, R over 4, and R over 4, the equivalent of this is going to be R. So I pick a value of KP, which gives me a total equivalent resistance of R. I pick a value of KN, such that the worst case resistance is going to be equals to R. Okay, that's the uh, that's the me method behind why how we pick KP and KN. Okay, so let's continue our discussion. Let's continue our discussion in terms of estimating the delay of this transistor of this circuit. Okay, so I'm going to copy that carefully. Okay, so we are back to estimating delay. By delay, I mean T propagation delay rising and T propagation delay falling. Okay, what are the values um, for a fan out of one? And this is a three input NAND gate. Okay, so um, let's start by looking at the um, looking at the values of capacitances here. Okay, I'll drag this down a touch. Make it. Okay, 
So uh, in order to do that, in order to estimate the delay, um, we using the RC delay component, RC delay method, let's look at the capacitances on each of the nodes, okay? So there is a capacitance on the gate, and the value of that is 2C. Each of these capacitances, they have a 2C value. Okay, and then each of these drains also have a capacitance of 2C. to see capacitances, okay? So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is for the PMOS transistors, for the NMOS transistors, there is a capacitance of 3C over here. There is a capacitance of 3C over here. There's a capacitance of 3C over here, okay? There's another capacitance here but then that is shorted, so I don't care about it. The same here as well. I don't care about these capacitances because they're, um, well, for a different reason. I still don't care about these capacitances for a different reason. But for now, um, let's look at what is on the other side, okay? There is a capacitance of 2C over on the gate of PMOS transistor, and there's a capacitance of 3C on the gate of the NMOS transistor. Okay? Questions, please. Questions so far? Do you see something I'm... Uh, um, do you see some capacitance missing somewhere? I'm ignoring a capacitance or I'm under-reporting some capacitance somewhere. The source capacitance and the PMOS. The PMOS on the right side? Uh, on the left. You mean this capacitance here? Yes, yes. Yes, that is correct. Uh, very good, that is correct. I ignored this capacitance because its terminals are shorted. This terminal, and this terminal, both of these, both of these are connected to the same um, VDD. So I'm going to ignore them. NMOS okay. gate capacitance. NMOS gate, gate capacitance, sure. The argument I'm making is that my signal path is through this, okay? And there is no direct connection between the output node and the gate node. Gate is floating. It is off of the signal path, so I will ignore that. Correct. So that is one of the things I'm ignoring. What else? What else am I ignoring? I'll give you a hint. Look at this node. Look at the node that is in between two NMOS transistors. There should be two capacitances there, one for source and one for drain. Yes. See, the idea is I would expect there to be two capacitances here, okay? The NMOS on the top contributes 3C and the bottom NMOS transistor contributes another 3C. So I would think if I were replacing it with RC model, I would want to use a capacitance of 6C over here. The same down below as well. I would want to use 3C, uh, 6C capacitance over here, but there is a really cl clever technique to minimize the capacitance over there and make an approximation that it's equals to 3C, okay? And I'll show that to you at a later time. For now, um, trust me that I'm not, uh, that we can, reduce the total capacitance when this is not connected to an external pin, okay? So any of the pins, any of the nodes 
that do not have an external connection, we can reduce the capacitance there. Okay, so they, these are all the capacitances. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to simplify this further. Okay, I'm going to simplify this further by getting rid of these capacitances here from the gate because they are not connected to the signal path. Okay, so the only capacitances that I really that really matter are the two C capacitances. Okay, there's another two C capacitance on uh, that node, which is the same as the output node. Okay, so um, if we look at this, and let's um, estimate the delay first for T, T, D falling, okay? So pull down network is active, okay? And this is, um, I'm going to redraw the circuit to appear like this, okay? The pull down network, there are three PMOS transistors. Uh, let, me, let me copy that here. There are three PMOS transistors, NMOS, sorry. Okay, so corresponding to each of these NMOS transistors, I'm going to include a resistance. Okay, so the resistance value is going to be R over three, R over three, and R over three. Now, there is a capacitance of 3C coming from the NMOS transistors, though, so there is 3C. There is another capacitance here. There's another capacitance 3C over here. There's another cap 3C over there, okay? This is connected to ground. And the PMOS circuit, if you go back, the PMOS circuit, the three nodes are also connected to the, um, connected to the output. So I want to make sure I account for the capacitances that are connected on the nodes here. So the total capacitances are 2C in parallel with another 2C, in parallel with another 2C. So in other words, I also want to include the capacitances from the pull-up network. Is that it? Is that a complete representation of the um, fan out one, three input NAND gate falling scenario or am I missing something? Let's go back, I'll show you here. So I have accounted for the three uh, capacitances in the top, and I also accounted for um, the all the capacitances connected in the path to pull down network. Okay. Do I have to take into account any other capacitances? The load capacitance. The load capacitances, correct. So anything that is to the right of this node, okay? I want to make sure that I account for those, okay? So um, I account for those by using um, a total of 5C capacitance here, okay? And let's annotate that to be our node. To the right of that is load, to the left of that is the driver. Okay, so here is the idea, there is 5C because this is 2C and this is 3C. Okay, so in effect, I have a 5C capacitance. Okay, so let's simplify this. There is going to be one R3, R over three, a total capacitance of 3C, plus 6C, so that's 9C, 
okay followed by another capacitance of 3c over here r over 3 another capacitance of 3c followed by r over 3 okay plus there is 5c here coming from the load okay so we are interested in finding out the delay estimating the delay. <coughs> sorry very sorry we are interested in estimating the delay at that node okay it's a it's not as easy as we think it is because we have an rc ladder Okay, I have an RC ladder. There is a resistance followed by another node with capacitance, resistance. So this is called an RC ladder. We have to use what is known as Elmore delay calculations to estimate the value there. We'll come back to that. Okay, but let us remember that is, uh, let, let us remember that this is TPD falling. Okay. We are estimating the value of TPD falling. We will come back to finish this problem. Before that, let's uh, look at the um, rising component. TPD rising, where pull-up network is active. Okay, so where the pull-up network is active. So if I go back to the NAND gate, if I go back to the NAND circuit, Okay, and bring that over. Okay, I'm going to bring the NAND gate over here. Okay, the idea is that we want to estimate the rise time, TPD rising. Okay, TPD rising. When, they, when we are estimating TPD rising, we assume that the pull-up network is on and the pull-down network is off, is effectively off. Okay, and I'm going to make an argument here. This is an argument that we saw already okay the idea that um, tpd is calculated for the worst case okay if we are estimating the best case if we are estimating the best case then that is called t contamination delay contamination delay But we are interested in calculating the propagation delay. Okay, so let's see how we can estimate the propagation delay of this guy. But who can tell me what is the worst case? What does worst case represent in this case, in this scenario? So wouldn't that be where only one PMOS transistors turned on? Correct, that's very correct. Only one PMOS transistor is turned on. So in other words, um, if I use this color, this, let's say one PMOS, okay, has an input of zero because it is on. The other PMOS have an input of one. So um, they are off, okay? So what happens is the PMOS or the NMOS corresponding to this guy, is going to see a one, okay? The NMOS corresponding to this guy is going to see another one. And the NMOS corresponding to this guy is going to see a zero. So this is, um, this is what happens, okay? So in other words, um, what happens is the path goes from VDD, okay? VDD, let me pick a different color okay and smaller thickness so the path goes from vdd 
through this transistor to the output and it also goes all the way down to this node because both of these transistors are on okay so i have a path here a pathway um, which um, goes all the way down to the node below but not to the ground okay but not to the ground so let's uh, bear that in mind but the signal path though i want to show you clearly the signal path though is from here the charging path is through this okay so now let's look at the um, capacitance and the resistance associated there okay so let's look at the capacitance and the resistance associated there i'm going to redraw the circuit with a little bit more um, With a little bit more of uh, room. Okay, so I'm redrawing the circuit here. I'll eliminate these um, connections because you see them already. Once you see them, um, we can simplify the circuit. Okay, so now what happens is the worst case happens when these PMOS transistors are disconnected. Okay, these PMOS transistors are disconnected and then they are not um, contributing towards the delay here. Okay, also this guy is disconnected. So in effect, what we have is a circuit that looks like so, okay? So there is this resistance R coming from the PMOS transistor and capacitances that look like so. Two C, two C and two C capacitances from uh, the pull-up network. The pull down network has two resistances in series. Three C R over three. Another capacitance here. Three C. There's a capacitance on this node, which is three C as well. Okay. And this is my output node. My output node is right here, okay? So I know towards the other side of the output node, I have a capacitance of, what was the value over there? Can somebody remind me the value of the capacitance um, coming from the load? 5C. Thank you, 5C. And then the capacitance towards the um, driver, uh, we are estimating. Okay, so each of these is R over three. Okay, so I'm only going to uh, look at the capacitances here. This is the signal path. Remember, this is a pull up circuit. So I'm trying to charge the capacitance at this node, okay, at the, at the node Y. Okay, so the signal path is from VDD to um, VDD to ground. So what I see is this guy. R, there's a total of um, 9C capacitance, adding up all these capacitances and this guy, okay? Followed by a capacitance of 5C coming from the load. Okay, um, and some resistances over here. R over three and some capacitance three C. R over three and some capacitance three C. So I'm not going to consider this as a, um, I'm not going to consider this as a, um, 
ladder circuit the total resistance seen on this node so i'm going to use, consider this as a simple rc circuit okay because the signal path does not go through these transistors i don't have to incorporate them okay the only thing that i incorporate is the resistance times there is this 9c capacitance plus 5c capacitance coming from the load so this is from the driver or the parasitic this is from the load so the t propagation delay rising is going to be that guys okay questions please questions about that there was a question in the comments okay could you i i don't think i have access to that would you be able to read it out loud maybe yeah it said uh this might be a dumb question but why does a 2c capacitance remain even when the transistor is turned off yes that's not a dumb question that's an excellent question as a matter of fact i was hoping somebody would ask that question so thank you okay so the capacitance that is associated with the diffusion here um, when the signal is not passing and the signal is not passing as well this circuit this capacitance is going to remain active because it's a diffusion capacitance a diffusion capacitance it's from this node to ground um, because it is from the node to ground um, and also the same scenario here as well um, the pmos transistor even though it is not in the signal path even though it is turned off okay um, the diffusion component of it the diffusion terminal um, does contribute its capacitance um, associated to the load um, circuit that's the reason why even though so this is an important uh, observation even if pmos and nmos that are connected to the output node are off even when they are off their caps are active okay so this is an important um idea that you want to remember and the reason is their diffusion capacitances um uh, they still charge and discharge because there is a connection to the ground from the signal path okay so what happens is um when there is a signal uh, when there is a capacitance connected to the ground as this signal goes up or goes down this capacitance also stores some of the charge that is connected at the output node that is uh, making the output swing up or down that uh, the capacitance here also stores some of the charge and that's the reason why um, we don't eliminate them okay even though their corresponding uh, nmos transistors are off so that's a good observation any other questions please what other questions do you have so the t propagation delay propagation delay rising for three input is this for a three input nand gate is r times 9c plus 5c so this is a fan out one Three input NAND gate that is sized so that its pull up network and pull down network both have a resistance of R in the worst case scenario. Okay, with these attributes, the delay is going to be that guys. So now my question for you is. What is TPD raising if the fan out equals to five? What do you think would be the 
um, delay, uh, propagation delay for this guy. Uh, well, we know that the the delay from the driver wouldn't change. Uh, it would just scale the the load um, delay by five, so you'd get twenty five C for the load. Thank you. That is correct. So um, the driver or the parasitic component does not change. Um, the only thing that changes is the load component. Thank you. We are going to see an equation that shows exactly that in a minute, in a, in a few, uh, yeah. one or two classes, maybe one class. Okay. So the other question is, how do we solve the problem that we left off earlier? Okay. So the problem that we left off earlier is to calculate the delay of an RC ladder that looks like this, okay? But compare, so before I move further, I want you to think about one reason, one um, idea. This looks like a ladder, okay? There is an output node, there is a resistance followed by a capacitance, resistance followed by a capacitance, resistance, okay? So there is, it's a RC ladder. Okay, now let's go back to the TPD rising. If I go back to the TPD rising, well, sure enough, this also has um, resistance followed by a capacitance, resistance followed by a capacitance. So this also looks like an RC ladder, right? How is it that I simply ignored all of these resistances and only looked at the resistance there and the capacitance is here. Why do you think I'm ignoring the RC ladder? Why am I not taking into account um, these resistances and these capacitances? Because during rising, we consider only PMOS activity and not NMOS. That is correct because this is a rising transition. The signal path is from VDD to output. Okay, so these resistances, the resistance here and here, they're off the main signal path. Because these resistances are not sitting directly in the signal path, I can approximate them to be absent, okay? When I approximate them to be absent, what happens is I only see um, one resistance R times um, 9C times 5C, okay? So I pretended like these resistances do not exist because they're not in the signal path, okay? Now, on the other hand, if I go back to the circuit here, I don't want to and I can't ignore these resistances. The reason is, this is a TPD falling, so the signal has to be supplied by the ground, and the ground, has to, the ground signal has to be connected through all of these resistances to the output node. That's the output node Y, right? So because, the RC ladder is in the signal path. I have to take into account each of these resistances, okay? I cannot ignore them. Make sense? So when I see an RC ladder, there is a slightly different mechanism to calculate the delay. Okay, the delay is called L mode delay. So I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to show you 
how to estimate the delay um, for RC network. Okay. So we are going to talk about Elmore delay estimation. for RC ladder, okay? So I'm going to give you the canonical form or the generic structure. Let's say there is a signal source that looks like so, and there is an RC ladder, R1, R2, R3, so on, Rn. Okay, and then there are capacitances C1, C2. In effect, I have an RC ladder, C3, so on, followed by CN. Each of these nodes is N1, N2, N3, and NN. <laughs> okay, now the delay for this guy, total propagation delay in this case um, is sum over all the nodes of R I to source times the capacitance at that node, okay? So what I mean is, um, if I expand this out, this equation out, PPD is going to be R1 times C1. So at this node, the total capacity, the, the total resistance seen to the source is R1, and the total capacitance at that node is C1. Plus, when I'm estimating the delay coming from this node, okay, oops, the total resistance to this node, which is R1 plus R2, times the capacitance at that node, which is C2, plus, when I'm estimating the delay at the third node, it will be the total resistance R1 plus R2 plus R3 times C3 and so on. So the total resistance between a node to the signal times the total capacitance at that node, okay? So that's the idea of Elmore delay, which we want to apply for the RC ladder in the pull down network. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let us um, let's look at this. Uh, Copy that. I'll clean this up a bit. Okay, so this is the pull down network, RC ladder. The signal source, remember, is this guy. That's the signal source. Right, because we are trying to drive it to the ground signal. And the output node is this guy. Okay, so in order to estimate the delay of this guy, the TPD falling is equals to the resistance at this node. So the resistance at that node 
which is r over 3 times the total capacitance at that node 3c plus now i'm going to look at the next node which is this guy okay so the total resistance from that node to ground is r over 3 plus r over 3 times the total capacitance on that node which is 3c plus i want to estimate the um, resistance at, at this node so that would be um, r over 3 plus r over 3 plus r over 3 all the way to the ground times 9c okay times um, 9c plus 5c okay so that will be the that will be the delay so t p d falling equals to rc plus this is 2rc plus um, r times 9c plus 5c okay so it's going to be um in the order of 9 plus 3 12 rc plus 5 rc okay 12 plus 5 rc ppd falling for fan out one okay so if you remember the tpd rising the value of tpd rising was um let's go back and take a look tpd rising was uh, 9c plus 5c r times r times 9c plus 5c tpd falling is going to be r times 12c plus 5c okay so there is a difference between uh, the rise time propagation delay and the fall time propagation delay does that make sense okay questions please questions comments concerns okay so that's the that's the idea of um, calculating the tpd rising and tpd falling so i have a question for you how would you calculate 2c tcd rising and tcd falling <clears throat> tcd is again the best case TPD, both of these are the worst case delay. Let's say I ask you to calculate the TCD rising of a NAND gate, fan out one, three input, NAND gate. How would you calculate the TCDR? Who wants to volunteer? So wouldn't that be with all three PMOS turned on, all three NMOS turned off? All three PMOS turned on and all the three NMOS turned off. So it's going to be two R, two R. Oh, sorry, R and R and R. So R, R and r so these are the resistances of all the pmos transistors and now the effective capacitance of all of these is 6c and then this p nmos is off as well so this nmos is off but then it still contributes its capacitance so that's going to be um, 3c times it is of course the 5c capacitance coming from the load okay so what happens is the total delay is the equivalent resistance r over 3 times the capacitance 9c plus 5c okay so this is the tcd 
rising. Okay, so compare that to um, TPD raising. TPD raising was the value of R times 9C plus 5C. Okay, so TPD raising is roughly three times T contamination delay raising. Okay, so um, contamination delay is the best case, and then propagation delay is the worst case. Okay, any questions, please? Questions so far? Okay, <clears throat> so questions like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, questions like these are going to be on the quiz and midterm. Okay, if I give you a four input NAND gate, how would you find the KP value and KN value such that the resistances in the pull up network? and the pull down network for the worst case are going to be the same as that for the unit inverter, okay? When you have the pull up network resistance equals to one R and the pull down network resistance equals to one R, in the worst case, each of them in the worst case, then um, they are comparable to to the resistances of unit inverter. Okay, so um, what if I don't give you a unit inverter? I give you an inverter whose Kp and K, Kn are twice. And see that kind of that kind of uh, questions. Okay, once you calculate the KP, what is the TPD raising? What is the TPD falling? What is the TCD raising? TCD falling. So these kind of questions expect them for a, a variety of circuits. Okay, in the um, midterm and in the um, upcoming quiz, one week from now. Now, we're going to go into um, uh, what is known as a linear delay model, okay? So delay, we know, we have seen so far that we can express delay in terms of two components, parasitic delay. This is also coming from the driver. And this is also called the self-loading or or uh, uh, self um, delay component. And then there is the effort or the load, okay? There, is, there are two components to that. So this is D equals to F plus P, okay? Um, delay is um, F plus P. P where uh, F is G times H, okay? So the way I remember is Diane. Um, Diane is a, just give me a second. So D is F plus um, P. And by F, by friendly, I mean that she gives out great hugs, okay? That's the way I like to remember. And then I uh, specify the name, the uh, uh, terms uh, more clearly. But for now, um, bear with me that this is uh, GH plus P. So the idea is delay can be expressed 
in terms of G times H plus the P parasitic component. Well, D is the delay. F is called the effort component of the delay. So all of this, G times H is F, right? So P is the parasitic component. Okay, P is the parasitic component. G is called the logical effort. H is the all familiar fan out. Okay, so what I can tell you is the logical effort is independent of size. Okay, and this is um, the fan out depends on size. Okay, so D is GH plus P. This is called the linear delay model because it resembles Y is MX plus C. Okay, Y is MX plus C. So that's the idea here. If you plot the um, delay, <coughs> it looks like D is um, GH plus P. Okay, that's the idea of linear delay model. We'll talk some more about that. Okay. We look at definitions. So this guy, G, is similar to the slope. G is very similar to the slope of the line. And the parasitic um, component, P, is similar to the, um, the C, okay, or the y-intercept. Therefore, um, X is um, X corresponds to H over here. Y is MX plus C. Okay. We let, let's see how we can calculate um, each of these terms. So D is GH plus P or D. Diane is a friendly person. By friendly, we mean that she's, um, she gives great hugs. So let's see how we can estimate each of these. It is the number of identical copies. Okay, so if we go back, so number of identical copies in the load. So if we go back here, Okay, if we go back over there, and I mentioned um, instead of one fan out, if there are five fan outs, each of these contributes to. So, if I go back and look at the um, answer that I found here, it should be in here somewhere. Okay, in here. So this is 9C plus 5 times 5C. So this component is the um, H component, and that component is the G component. Okay? So that's the idea of GH plus P. And then you can see that this guy, where is that? So this guy is the parasitic component. So the delay is G times H plus P. And then we know the correspondence between each of these terms. Okay, H, um, if we know the number of identical copies, then we can simply say uh, that number is the H. If not, another way to calculate H is to look at the 
overall output capacitance at the very end of the circuit over the overall input capacitance at the very beginning of the circuit. Okay, so this is also called electrical effect. F4. Okay, so um, the logical effort, so the next part is G. So we looked at H. The next part is G. This is also called logical effort. Okay, the logical effort is defined as the C input of a gate over the C input of an inverter. Okay, the logical um, effort component is the C input of a gate over the C input of an inverter. Who can tell me what is the C input capacitance of an inverter? The volunteers. So I'm drawing out the inverter here. This value is two. This value is one because I'm interested in. Say that again. The input is on this terminal. The output is on this terminal. Okay, so what I want to know is what is the total capacitance is it looking zero? into the zero could be one answer. The total capacitance, not the current. The current going into the input is zero, right? There is no current going into the gate. But what is the total capacitance looking into the um, input? Let me see. 3C, because this KP value is 2, the capacitance here is going to be 2C. And this KN is 1, so this capacitance is going to be C. So the input capacitance is the sum of 2C and 1C, which, is, which happens to be 3C. Okay, another question for you. Do we have time? A couple of minutes of time. Okay. For a three input NAND gate, what is the value of C input? As a matter of fact, we calculated that. We know that from our previous problem. What would be that value? Let's go back to the three input NAND gate. Five C. Five C is correct. Looking at that is correct. Five C is correct. Um, looking at the capacitance here, um, where did that go? So if you look at the uh, pink path here, the input has a three C capacitance and a two C capacitance. So the total input, each of the inputs have a total capacitance of 5C. So Cn of a three input NAND equals to 5C. So if you calculate the G of a three input NAND, by definition, that is C input of the NAND by C input of the inverter, so which is 5C over 3C, or that is equals to 5 over 3. Okay, so um, we can calculate the logical effort G for each of the um, NAND gate, NOR gate, each of the circuits. Okay, so um, we leave, uh, I leave you here. Um, so we, are, we will continue the discussion about delay in the next class. Um, for now, are there any questions? What questions can I answer for you? Yeah, on the inverter, 
Are the gates not floating? Why do you still count the capacitance? The gates are floating. Correct. Um, even though the, the gates are floating, what happens is there is no current going, um, let's say there is no current going into the gate through the drain or through the source. That's not happening. But what happens is if I am trying to put a charge on this guy, that charge, some of it is stored onto this capacitance. Okay. If there is an AC signal here, this capacitance begins to store the charge. And then, um, and that's the reason why I want to, or in other words, or in other words, um, if I'm using this circuit as the load, okay, if I'm using this circuit as the load, the capacitance is here, they load the output of the previous stage, okay? And that's the reason why um, we want to incorporate these capacitances, even though there is no um, current going into that node. So it causes a delay? It does cause a delay. Um, okay. So, yeah, it does cause a delay on the load side. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Other questions, please. So, in other words, um, the capacitances towards the right of this node affect the delay at this node, and that's the reason these capacitances, two C and the three C capacitances, they do affect the delay in the node um, at this node here. And that's the reason why we want to use them. Other questions, please. TPD raising, TPD falling. So look at all your uh, uh, nodes and uh, um, the delay calculation will be important for your uh, quizzes and for your exams and in general, um, understanding the circuits as well. Okay, so I'll see you folks um, back on Tuesday. Thank you.